the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So this is kind of a critical moment in Mark. It's a, an enormous pivot. Uh, Mark has spent the first part of his gospel uh, talking about Jesus entering into this community uh, and the effect that it's had both locally and, and abroad. Uh, Jesus challenging the institution, uh, Jesus healing and curing and challenging the church uh, to be the full representation uh, of, of the God that he came to reveal. Uh, and the second half is going to be pointed towards Jerusalem, uh, towards Jesus' journey towards Jerusalem. And this uh, is that crux of identifying who it is that Jesus is more than just uh, a healer, uh, more than just uh, a teacher, uh, more than just somebody who was called to challenge uh, and, uh, and, and, and ignite the church, uh, that Jesus has in a particular job uh, that the rest of the gospel will be directed toward, uh, that Jesus uh, came for the salvation of the world. Uh, and so uh, he's walking with his disciples, uh, and Peter, who seems to get it wrong almost every time, finally has his moment in the sun. Uh, this is actually called the, the, the Confession of Peter. Uh, and it's an exciting moment where Peter is finally going to get it right. Um, and he comes to the front of the class uh, when asked, uh, who, who do you say that I am? Uh, and he says, the Messiah. And he says, yes. And then he starts talking about what that might look like. And all of a sudden, uh, Peter's sort of beside himself. Uh, pulls Jesus aside and says, this can't be how the story is going to end. Uh, and it ends even in Peter's glorious moment uh, with, with Jesus calling uh, Peter uh, Satan and saying, get behind me, Satan. Uh, not necessarily directed at Peter, but so even his moment in the, in the sun is, uh, is a little bit dampened uh, with, with a rain cloud. Uh, but let me get to the crux of the three questions that Jesus is really addressing in this moment um, and in this transitional moment. The first is... Who do people say that I am? Now, people have been particularly excited uh, about Jesus because he's done things they've never heard, uh, seen done before. He said things uh, that make sense in a way that really strikes deep down uh, into people's hearts, uh, the way that the church may not have made sense uh, in the human uh, construct of the church. Uh, and he's striking a chord. Uh, but he wants people to know that he is more than that. He is more than they've seen thus far. Uh, that he is uh, more than just an inspired preacher. He is God in the flesh. And so he asks, who do they say that I am? And then the second question, who do you say that I am? And then he addresses the third question. So what does that mean for your life? If you've answered question number one and question number two, what does it look like in your life? What does it mean to follow me? So let's break these down. So I think these are three questions that we should be asking ourselves, certainly as uh, we've begun this program year uh, with the encouragement to go out and welcome people into the church, uh, to invite people to come to St. James, uh, to talk about your faith. Uh, I think answering these three questions becomes fairly important. One. How do we as the church universally understand Jesus? Who is Jesus uh, that we uh, form our faith around, that we have crosses uh, and images around our space? Who is Jesus universally? And we have different answers, but we have kind of a universal construct of who it is that we follow, what it teaches us in the gospel about this uh, man, about this uh, Godhead. And then the second question, what in my own life connects? What do I understand Jesus to be? Who do I understand Jesus to be in my own life? Who would I say that he is? And we don't all answer that question the exact same way. I talked last week about the Syrophoenician woman and Jesus uh, 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 challenging the Syrophoenician woman, uh, even uh, 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 using uh, a very impolite comment to describe the Syrophoenician woman, uh, and talked about how the church has struggled with that. If the lordship of Jesus uh, is really the way that you connect, the perfection of of Jesus Christ in the flesh, uh, the, uh, the stability that comes with the absolute divinity, perfection, and godliness uh, of, of, of Jesus, if that is the crux of your faith, then that 
passage last week was pretty challenging. If it's the humility of a God who really came in human form, who really came uh, to live a life in the flesh, uh, that God uh, would, would come and humble God's self enough uh, to understand all of the fragilities and all of the vulnerabilities uh, and all of the missteps of being human. If that's really where the rubber meets the road for you, then that's how you would respond to that question. And that's how you would go out into the world uh, and, and, and talk about your experience of your life intersecting with Jesus. And then the third the third, what difference does it make in your life? What does it mean to follow Jesus? I think every Sunday, one of the things that, um, that I'm grateful for, and I, I can't say that I, I thought that when I was uh, uh, in seminary or first going uh, into the church, uh, is that confession. That confession uh, immediately met with the absolution because it is that moment where I am asked, has my life been given up in some way for my discipleship, my following of Jesus? Uh, and am I hitting it uh, exactly the way that I am? Uh, am I giving up enough of uh, my own life? And by that, I don't mean uh, my willingness uh, uh, to die on the cross, but a willingness to separate myself from all of the things that Ben Moss wants uh, to give a, a little bit more pause and a little bit more time uh, and openness uh, to what God might be doing in me. Am I emptying enough of myself uh, to be filled with God? Uh, and where have I met the needs of the world? Where have I been filled in a way that has uh, an impact and, and my identity uh, can be connected to God? Uh, and so I ask these three questions. Who is the God that we follow? What is it about that God uh, that b burns a fire in my heart, uh, and how does it change my life? And if you want an example of what that might look like, what that transformation, what that emptying of yourself and being transformed by faith may look like, uh, I encourage you to read the letter of James. Uh, one thing I find in incredibly uh, uh, interesting about today's passage, uh, if you were an English major, uh, how many metaphors he tries to use uh, in about one paragraph. There's about 12 metaphors uh, for the power of how we talk about one another, whether directly uh, or indirectly. How do we take care of one another? And there's uh, a lot more uh, than just uh, what we do with our tongue in the letter of James. Uh, but I encourage you to take those three questions. Before you go and welcome people into the church, address those three questions in your faith. Who is the God that I follow? Who is the God that connects with me personally? What is it about that God uh, that has space in my heart that is, uh, that is pulling me towards him? And three, what change has it made in my life? Or is it making in my life? Or do I want it to make in my life uh, that I follow that God? And in those three questions, uh, I think we bend ourselves towards that discipleship that all of us are and answering the question that Jesus laid before Peter and his disciples. Amen.